What an epic game two of Empire versus IG Vitality. But we're now back to game two of OG versus Invictus Gaming, where hopefully we will feature our own epic game. As game one was definitely very one-sided. OG took control of the game very quickly after they got that Radiance Alchemist. Felt like the old OG was back in time. I think they do such a great job of kind of setting up the one hero for success more than anything else. You know, Anna's that kind of player where no matter what his lane struggles are, he makes great decision-making, itemization choices are always on point, and he, he just always kind of comes into play post like 15, 20 minutes, and I think that's probably his best attribute. So when you have these four heroes as a supporting cast for an alchemist like that against IG, it, it was just too much for them to handle. And it even looked fairly promising for Invictus Gaming in the early parts of the game. OP had a pretty good laning phase, they were invading the jungle a bit, and then little by little, it just seemed like OG were finding pickoffs and Anna wasn't being killed for a while, and suddenly he goes from like being 1k ahead to 5k ahead, then 10k, and eventually he just smothered IG with a with an insane gold lead. So like you said, game two, a little bit into the draft already, as we were all eagerly watching the, the what, one, 130 minute game? Yeah, was it, Something it was like over that? two hours. Completely nuts. And it's just the group stages, Cap. It is just the group stages. <laughs> I wonder. Have we ever had like one of those really epically long games on the main uh, stage? For we TI had, before? At, I think at TI3 there were some pretty long games. Yeah. But I don't ever remember something being that long. Like yeah. over two hours, I don't believe on the main stage has ever happened before. That egregiously like megas versus just turtling against megas for hours on right, hours. Right. We have a very interesting draft. Uh, OG again with the the somewhat fearless draft variety in their first one, two. They go ahead and grab a, a Phantom Lancer Earthshaker against a Lich. Now, I'm not sure why IG have picked up a first pick Lich. I'm certainly not a fan, but there have been plenty of teams like Cloud9 who seem very optimistic about the hero and its impact to the game. They're going to follow that up with a Phoenix and Tree and Protector. Lovely support duo that I think everyone is uh, a fan of if you're Phoenix or Train Protector. Meanwhile, IG, they follow up that, that Lich with a Leech Commander, Earth Spirit, Ember Spirit, and now a Troll Warlord. I think it's a very well-rounded lineup coming in from Invictus Gaming. They have a good amount of physical damage. They have good pick. Their team fight is, I would say, pretty on point. Just having Ooh. Ember alone, magical damage with the Earth Spirit initiation. You, ha you don't really have the greatest lockdown, per se, for like a Lich Chain Frost, but their laning phase is going to be really strong. Mm -hmm. They're gonna. They're not really gonna be super weak at any stage in the game. I think that's probably the best way to kind of talk about Invictus Gaming draft here. On the other hand, you have OG who have this. It's not really a, a four protect one, but at the same time, I think a lot of the the space creation and stuff is gonna be no tail, kind of running around the map and just being a nuisance. His hero is very good. I would say against probably three out of five of Invictus Gaming's heroes. So you can obviously remove the blind from Troll. You can dispel yourself from Magnetize, which is just amazing right and lich is pretty weak against phantom lancer outside of just you know being able to sacrifice and and make him not be able to get experience in lane because obviously phantom lancer buys diffusal blade and diffusal blade against lich armor means that you just kind of flop over so i'm kind of liking what uh what og are bringing here in the second game but i think it's a little bit different this time around because ig's lineup has extremely powerful late game even against an enigma who potentially will get blank bkb OG have given IG the old EG switcher. That's a lot of G's. It's Jesus. a lot of G's. But uh, they gave him the EG switcheroo. So they pick up the Earthshaker, I think the most versatile hero of the, the current patch that can operate in the 2, 3, 4, and 5 position, respectively. And they head, fear of the Earthshaker. You pick up the Amber Spirit. All right, that's a that's a really good matchup for the Earthshaker in that one. Let's go ahead and change from an offlane Earthshaker to a mid Shaker and get us a different offlane hero. And uh, as you said, BKB Enigma, super value here. There is just Chain Frost to stop the BKB uh, Black Hole. So if he gets BKB Lincolns, that's going to be the, I guess, the, the penultimate team fight for, for either team, really. Yeah. Just going to be down to S4's positioning and team fights, which, you know, showing the last game, his Batrider is always just a treat to watch. Played, a, played it very well. This time around, he's going to have a little bit of a different role, but still kind of the one who maybe waits a little bit, finds his opportunity, and then just goes in, which I do believe that S4 of all people would excel at. So game starting off here. Ember versus Earthshaker mid. I think a lot of heroes 
against Ember who are melee suffer a bit because you don't really have a good way of dispelling Flame Guard. Mm -hmm. But because of how much damage Enchant does, you can kind of just go in and joust. You know, if, if he's harassing you a bit, you Enchant Totem, you hit him. It's a tremendous amount of damage, even at just like level two or three. Yeah, we see in those oftentimes the first like three levels, the Earthshaker just positions himself between the Ember Spirit and his and the Creep Wave. And he just kind of sits forward. And if you ever come forward as the Ember Spirit, he's going to hit you with the Aftershock, and he might hit you with the Totem, uh, depending on like the what the Creeps are doing and whether or not he wants a certain CS. So it's going to be uh, an interesting matchup for sure. But later on into the levels, right, it does get a little bit dangerous for the Earthshaker. He may be tanky, but the higher levels uh, of Flame Guard Chains and then eventually the, the Remnant does provide such a significant amount of burst damage that just even one support, which they do have a really good one for punishing melee heroes in the mid lane, uh, Bulbaka's Earth Spirit, uh, just one support can do a lot to, uh, to kill the Earth Spirit mid. He's definitely going to need a lot of support, I think, once the Ember starts to get to like that 5-6 range, like you're talking about, just the immediate kill potential that comes out once you have Fire Remnant available. His, his kill potential goes from pretty good to ridiculous in one level, something that Anna himself is going to have to be very aware of. This is... I'm not sure how many times Anna's done the mid shaker so far here at TI, but it's usually him playing the heroes that come into their own during the late game and, and kind of just take over. Yeah. This is a bit of a different flavor, I think. Yeah, this is uh, this is a hero that you really want to make sure that you win your lane. And uh, and then actually transition into being a kind of a space creator of some sort. Initiator and be willing to die and all that sort of thing. You're not going to be that hard carry. Uh, Jericho's going to come in. They are going to be able to kill the sentry before it uh, fades away from them. So that's uh, definitely a big win for Jerex and being able to keep back this really annoying Lich Legion Commander duo. You can see they start going on a Q just barely outside of the tree so they don't get the Entangle. That may prevent them from getting the kill. We'll have to see a little bit of body blocking from XXS. And sure enough, if he had actually been hit by the Entangle from Nature's Skies, then they probably would have killed that Lich for a first blood. It would have been a huge kill too, because as time goes on, it's going to be harder and harder. They can't really commit to XXS in this lane, especially if Q decides that he wants to get a value point into armor instead of leveling up the, the Frost Blast. Yeah. Because a lot of the damage that you want to do early on with the Treant Protector and the Phantom Lancer is through right clicks. So that bonus armor is going to help him just pretty much live through anything. And the, the longer you're alive as Lich, you're sacrificing constantly. You're forcing the supports to be in one spot on the map, which is never really what you want if you're OG. I really like the way that XXS is playing this, though. I uh, see a lot of Legion commanders. They just abuse the fact that they can pull the creep waves onto themselves or some of these supports are kind of bad at harassment. And they, they really abuse Moment of Courage. So they're like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have something attack me and I'm just going to go ahead and fight you. But if I got Moment of Courage procs, it completely wins that matchup easily. Um, and considering that just level one sits at 55%, you're pretty good chance being able to get that uh, that proc off. Enigma has kind of abandoned the lane and is going to go ahead and be jungling right now, but IG's Bulbica is going to be able to spot him out and not really going to be able to harass him, not even take away that clarity, but he lets him know, I got my eye on you. Oh, he's going to be blocked. S4 got in front of the roll. So Bulbica is going to take a bit. Nothing too special. You got the clarity, man. That's value. Got it. Although S4 does have another, so at the end of the day, he'll just be walking back to his other camps, maybe just going to the tower to make sure that it's not taking any free chip damage, he's not missing out on any EXP. And I think IG this time around, they do have pretty strong lanes, the, the bottom lane especially. That's where we're going to have to keep our attention focused to see how much No-Tail can get being under this much pressure. You can see, even in the 3v2, XXS is beating him on, on CS. 10 and 4 compared to 8 and 0. Yeah. And that's not even accounting for the Lich denies. This is particularly scary for OG's No Tail, since Legion Commander is going to be one of the better heroes versus the uh, the Phantom Lancer and some of those early levels where your nuke is going to do so much against him and the illusions and then potentially catch the real hero with the duel. Mid lane, Anna's been doing quite well for himself. He's been doing that thing. He kind of sits forward, and Chan Totem hit him with the Aftershock, then uses the extra damage to be able to kill uh, a creep. Oftentimes a, a deny. You can see he's 23 and 9 right now compared to the Ember Spirit 17 and 4. I think this is kind of what you want when you're the Earthshaker mid. You want very little outside influence. You don't want people yeah. coming to your lane. You just kind of want to do your 1v1 thing. Bobo going real hard here. Yeah, Bobo going to be able to hit Jerex. 
kind of lock him inside the trees here. And uh, Jerex is going to get just nuked down. They uh, they didn't have any counter wards for him, right? So if he had actually gotten invis in time, he would live. Yeah, he stopped attacking a little bit late, maybe overestimating his own survivability just a tiny bit. But he did not start with the, the stout shield, so taking full damage from pretty much every single auto. I wonder if he regrets that, especially the way that Legion Commander was fighting him so often in that laning phase situation. Normally, you treat you like you shouldn't be worrying about trading hits right. at all. But this is actually because of Legion Commander, and she's uh, quite good at being able to trade back and forth with heroes. It actually ended up being to the favor of Legion Commander rather than the tree. I think it's the idea of killing the Lich. That's why you want them to be so Tail mad. Hit by the cake and the roll in. Nice. IG, man. That is one hell of a kill. Now, Bobica might just die, though XXS does give him a little bit of loving. Press the attack will allow Bobica to live. He's already got phase. He is just, he's going to get gigantic in this lane if this keeps up. They have the shrine, too. Like, this timing is perfect. They go for an all-in commitment under the tower, two heroes low. They get the shrine. They're going to be able to go right back to lane. So it's not even as if no Tail's going to get a reprieve from this pressure. It's just going to be right back in his face. I wonder if... Uh... IG are going to be even more pressure as they're going to be able to catch flying. Nice double kick there. Bobica even hits Jerex on the side. No tail tries to come in. But uh, all that he's going to receive for his efforts. Uh, a lot of chase down from XXS. Anyway, I was wondering if uh, OP, if he's going to rotate once he hits level 6, if he actually puts even more pressure in that bottom lane. But uh, he's actually going to receive the Echo Slam here, and it doesn't quite have enough damage. Still, oh. the Enchant Totem and the extra hit does manage to get that kill. So important. See, this is the thing about the Earthshaker mid lane. He'll always secure a CS advantage over you. He hits level 6 first, has that Echo Slam ready to go. It's such a big, big kill combination. While the Ember Spirit didn't have his level 6. So even though he didn't have the straight up instant kill chain stun combination to finish off the Earth Spirit, it didn't matter because he didn't have the escape mechanism with the Ren. Oh, that was... It was a really nice bait from Anna. I'm not sure if he intentionally walked into tower range, but that kicked off by him eating a Searing Chains into Flame Guard into eating about two or three tower shots in a row. And just even more benefit having the Arcane Rumi throughout the first Echo, so that means it's just going to be up that much faster. And again, there's not really a lot of outside influence on this lane. It's, it's pretty much just a strict 1v1. This is looking like, uh, to me, the way we're seeing these lanes play out, uh, pretty clear. IG victory in in part of this early draft because I don't yeah. think this is going to turn around pretty quickly. I mean, OG do have this all this amazing team fight potential, but it's going to be heavily based on execution. They need some great black holes or some great supernovas combined with the uh, the overgrowth, and it's going to be at a disadvantage. Like very likely, IG are going to walk away from this 10 to 15 mark. Uh, minute marker with like I would say at least a 5k gold lead. Might even be more than that to be honest. Yeah, like, I think you might be being a little bit generous. <laughs> and <laughs> and that's how... probably true. Because Burning's free farming. We've seen Burning Troll turn up, and then XXS he's he's free farming and keeping No Tail down. I wouldn't be surprised if this tower. Oh, look at this drop. cap and the jungle of IG. Wow. Huge stack being taken. Wow. Giving it all to OP. Yeah, OP is so happy with this. He had a lane against an Earthshaker, but now he is back in business, almost level 8 to match Anna's. Well, actually, Anna's almost level 9, but still, the some real, healthy recovery. The real benefit that uh, IG currently have is not only is their, their offlane winning really hard, but they have a hero that's great at rotating. Pop, speaking of rotations, burning. They do have a Black Hole, but he doesn't have the mana for it on S4, and I don't think they have the damage anyway. Have all the other prerequisites. It would have been pretty close because he had the Eidolons out. Yeah. I think if maybe they they had the mana for Black Hole, that they probably would have been able to get it, but it would have been close. It's all up for OG's Anna to turn this early game. You don't really say that too often about the lineups. You know, you don't usually say Anna needs to go on, have a great laning phase, and and win the early game for the rest of OG. But that's exactly what he has to do here. Once he picks up his Blink Dagger, he's going to have to relieve some of the pressure on no Tail and create some space for both him and S4. Because S4 is kind of a, a slow roller as well with this Enigma. I think he'll have his Blink timing at such a point where they should be able to handle it. Go for it for Bobaka. Okay, it's going to be able to get the stun in. Silence as well, so Earthshaker's not going to be able to go for the Echo Slam, and I don't think he really wants to here. He realizes he is 
dead. Better to hold. Oh, okay, he's actually going to use the Echo Slam to see if he can actually get away from all of this one. See if he can hide in the trees or something, but he's still going to be caught. That's four heroes. Yeah. That was a lot of reaction. I mean, he does end up losing a little bit of money, but at the end of the day, when you see that many heroes of IG in the middle lane just to kill one hero, No Tail is going to be having a little sigh of relief over here, Jarex. You better be done. I'm just giving a kill to Burning. That's what you've done. Believe me, if you haven't seen the Burning Troll, you really don't want to give him any extra net worth because this guy actually knows how to farm expertly with the hero. It's Mask Madness build. Uh, you also have to watch out for the early Roshan. Uh, oh, he did this around 10 minutes last time, and it's going to be jumped on once again. They're just going to keep this Blink Dagger out of the game. Because after all, if you're putting all this pressure on mid, yeah, you're rotating a lot of heroes. What's really changing about the game? Like, what, No-Tail's going to get a little farm? It's not like No-Tail picks up an item in the next 10 minutes that changes the game at all. I agree. It is... I mean, it's nice for No-Tail because he can hit creeps, but at the same time, the high-impact heroes are pretty much the Enigma and the Shaker. If you keep them down, those are the ones who are going to be making the plays and kind of allowing the, the rest of OG to recover and really win you fights. And if you can't get those key items up, it's going to get really rough for OG very quickly. And if you look at S4's itemization, he's opted to go for the Midas. So he's not going to be able to get that blink anytime soon. Speaking of OP following him around here. Yep. The Invis. They've already hit pri number, priority number one with the Earthshaker. Now they're going to hit priority number two to go for the S4. He does have the black hole, but they get the kick in. He still has the sounds ready to go, so if he tries to go for the black hole, he might be able to stop him. Uh, OP is getting farther and farther away from the uh, Earth Spirit Mocha. Now stuck in the trees, tries to go for the rollout. Fly stays on top of him, though. Nice turnaround there by OG. A fairly big reaction, but I think necessary. You can't let S4 just die at this stage, especially when he's very, very close to his Midas. Yeah. Still a couple hundred away from the blink on Anna here. 600, give or take. He probably would have had it already if no one had interfered with the middle lane. But I think that IG were so satisfied with how bottom went, they could justify, you know, sending that many heroes over. Sure. It's like, okay, well, we, we kind of dominated our lane. Right now, the PL still has less CS than XXS right now. And he's kind of left the lane for a little while. Sure, they eventually take the tier one, but it's not like it's been under constant pressure. A lot of the supports of IG were rotating. Big nuke on No Tail and some of S4's Eidolons. Now, XXS does have to be kind of careful here. He's going to try and take off the Malphite. No Tail still pursuing. He's going to turn and fight. Does have the Sunray out. That's going to actually add a lot. They're going to throw down the Black Hole, too. So, a big kill for OG. Now, they're in deep. So OP might be able to punish this. He's going to be the only one TPing, however. He really doesn't have any backup, but he believes in himself. And he looks for the kill onto S4. Nice uh, little doppelganger there from No-Tail to dodge the damage, but it won't save No-Tail, that's for sure. Now they have to make sure that OP can actually get out, but he's still good. He's going to keep on moving forward. Now that he's got the backup of Q with the extra nuke, they'll manage to finish off the Phantom Lancer as well. So they do indeed punish OG for that very deep dive and heavy commitment to kill XXS. That was such a, a nice judgment of how strong OP was at that given point in time. Like recognizing, okay, there's no Midnight Pulse. S4 is gone for the 440 build. So they couldn't clear out the trees, which means he has to pretty much commit Black Hole to ensure they get the kill on XXS. And then he's like, okay, how do you break my Flame Guard? You have no magical damage besides like a Spirit Lance and Malefice, which is not really that impressive. Just ensures that he gets the, the full benefit of his newly purchased Veil. Are actually two man smoked up here. Anna's coming in with a blink dagger. This could be huge. They're going on S4. This is a perfect kind of setup for Anna to be able to get a big kill. Leads with a fissure. Follow up. Enchant totem hit. Enchant totem number two does manage to get it without using the Echo Slam. That is perfect for OG. Yes, they lost S4, and that's sad, but they'll gladly trade the one for one trade up, especially if they don't have to use the big time ultimate. But Anna may not have the opportunity for a second chance to use Echo Slam. He immediately gets dueled up by XXS. And a win a winner for him plus a tower for dinner. Very good stuff. I like it. I'm a fan. Of IG or my role? Well, both. <laughs> it be both, right? <laughs> Bottom lane. Burning, going in here. Onto No Tail, chasing him down with the Mask of Madness. No Tail, no Doppelganger. He's gonna have to juke in the trees a little bit more. Six more seconds. Nice loop around the trees, but Burning is onto him. Burning is a bloodhound. He's just not going to let No Tail juke him. He's going to stay on top of this hero. Does manage to take away the living armor. He has Doppelganger up, but it's going to cost him. He has, he's actually missing the mana for it right now. He'd have to pop the Soul Ring, and that's just going to be too hard. 
Good silence from Bobica plus the urn. And uh, 4 to 11 now with a 6k advantage before the 15 minute markers. You're right, I was given top as well. Bit too much credit. S4 gonna be chased down, but oh man, this Sunray's doing so much damage, they actually win him. The percentage based duo of both the uh, the Phoenix as well as the Enigma, they're gonna be able to take not just one to kill, but also set up Anna, the extra one on the ledge. And we definitely take those. That's uh, another TP and middle lane, actually canceled. Jarex is sitting around here, but he doesn't have overgrowth, so I'm not sure what he can really do to stop OP. Meanwhile, OG, if they could take this tier one tower, that would be absolutely ecstatic. That would bring S4 super close to his blink dagger after his might was, was kind of delayed from... Oh, I guess he didn't die earlier, huh? They attempted to kill him, but... He was the only one who didn't die. Yeah. The other two heroes did. XXS. Goes out the nuke, does manage to get the duel onto the real no-tail, but there isn't the follow-up damage. Till there's OP. Finally gets out with a remnant, so it may not be a one duel, but it's still death, and Anna's here. He's got the Echoes, but he chooses to go for the Enchant Totem, and Zipper now with the chain stun. It's a problem! Anna, he pops to the Invis, hopefully to be able to get away, but the Sentry's already there, so he ends up dying. Hubris from Anna, he doesn't throw down that Echo Slam, and it costs him dealer. He doesn't even pick up one kill, and now his teammates are in trouble as well. Fly does manage to get away with the trees. He'll be okay, but it means burning. We'll gladly take that tier one tower away from OG. And now they actually caught Jarex as well. They laid down another sentry behind the tower. He kills it, but it won't save his life. Uh, I was a very greedy play for mana, going for the enchant into Echo, potentially. Just trying to get like an extra little bit of stun and damage out to ensure a more efficient combo. But in those situations where you blink into two heroes, I think when you're this far behind, you can't afford to hold your spells. You know what I mean? You kind of have to be willing to just throw them out and ensure that you get the kills on point. I guess at the same time, they didn't have vision of the high ground, so maybe they were unsure about how many of uh, Mickey's Gaming were reacting. So he thought he could get away with playing it a little bit greedy because he did have the Invis rune as well. Uh, Invictus Gaming though, punishing real hard, getting that tier one. And now Roshan is going to be on the table here. We've seen Burning do it in the past during the group stage, just gets an opportunity to walk into that Roshan pit with a Mask of Madness. And that Roshan is just going to die. Rotation down to bottom lane. XXS is really giving no tail. Zero quarter in this game. <laughs> Look, he's just sitting on a soul ring and ring of Aquila. He's trying to get that Diffusal Blade, and that's where things finally do start ramping up a little bit for the Phantom Lancer. He farms a bit faster, but he does finally contribute in team fights a bit more with that build. That's why we were talking about, right? It's like you leave no tail alone. It's not like he's going to get an item that changes the game, because that's not really until Diffusal Blade, if not plus one. Look at that. Yeah, he's gonna need a lot of this game. It's, it's very tough, and he's gonna want like Lincolns too for the Legion. There's a lot of items on that checklist that No Tail's looking at, and he's got like five dollars in his wallet, and he's going, "How do I afford all this stuff?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, mid lane, that tower is deniable. They are smoked up right now. They they really just gonna let the creeps take that? They're not gonna go for the dying? Oh, never mind. Creep aggro will prevent that from happening. I do kind of like the fact that they can stick around for bottom lane. And, and try out for that Phantom Lancer, it seemed like a little obvious. That being said, their rotation doesn't result in much because OG actually had a four-man smoke down to bottom lane. They were kind of baiting no tail uh, as he realized that there were heroes in the to shut him out. It seemed like IG figured perhaps showing one hero on the top lane was where OG were going. And we could see the reveal. He's gonna go for it, Echo Slam, and there's a huge amount of damage with double Enchant Totem hit. They are gonna be able to take down XXS, but now he's in trouble. They do have the Sun Ray out. That's gonna be a nice cake for Bobica on the two, but the Chain Frost right there is gonna bounce between the two. The Doppelganger's a little bit late to save Anna's life, but No Tail might still be able to get out, especially with the Black Hole on the two, with no Chain Frost to be able to stop that one. Both those heroes are dead. OP, low on Revenants, can't actually return fire, and OG will walk away with one team fight. Nicely done. That is probably the best way that team fights can go down for OG. They commit to a hero like Phoenix, or they're going on pretty much anybody but the Enigma. So S4 gets to watch this whole fight. You can see the ward on the hill after the fact that gave him a vision, knowing that pretty much all he has to do is go in and get that black hole after the overgrowth. They were taking so much damage. Yeah. Just having the egg down, the midnight pulse, the black hole combination after the overgrowth. Right. It's very, very scary for IG to fight into that prior to having BKBs. Now, I'm not going to blame Q for that instance. It was very juicy opportunity for Chain Frost. But going forward, after seeing that kind of fight, do you think he holds on to his Chain Frost no matter what? And he 
choke. Yeah, I think that's probably the safest play. But, you know, when you have the vision advantage, that's kind of what happens. You know, OG yeah. just had the vision of the fight, so they knew exactly when S4 could come in. We see the oh, four-man overgrowth. Look how close he came to killing that Supernova, or killing that Phoenix. If you got a bash at the right time anywhere in yeah. those swings, then the Phoenix dies and does get the Supernova off, and maybe the black hole isn't so well set up. Well, this time it's going to be another smoke, potentially looking for a Roshan here. Oh, this is not the time to hit Roshan. <laughs> Second illusion comes into the pit, does manage to reveal the troll, but they managed to get Anna with the duel. That is huge. They get the burst damage, they can even get XXS, the extra bit of duel damage, but not here. And it looks like IG, I mean, this is kind of fair. It's worth it. Yeah. Like, I, I think it, here they're looking at this like black hole's down, supernova's down. They really can't fight us, right? So who cares if they know we're roaching? If we're bringing all our heroes there, they actually can't five on five. Right? They do have over. Oh no, tail! You tried to doppelganger some of your illusions over, but instead himself is actually going to be caught. The hero is revealed, and now OG Jarex is also going to be caught. Fly tries to help him out, but OG actually goes straight for Fly. Fly is going to be ensnared a little bit and silenced. Beautifully comboed up by Bobaka. He waited, waited till the tail end of that entangled from Searing Chains was at an end, and then followed up for the silence for maximum disable on the Phoenix. Very nice punish here from IG. Having vision, knowing they can go for the kill onto Anna, recognizing the discrepancy in team fight without the use of the two ultimates. Just making sure that they get every single possible advantage they can. And I think this is one of the really important things when you're playing against the style that OG has in this draft, is just knowing when your timings are, recognizing, hey, they just popped all these ults. We need to make sure that we do something. Like, even if it's just one tower kill, if it's Roshan, if it's a, a pick or two, you have to apply some pressure in that downtime. You can't just allow OG to play the game and always have their ultimates up for every big engagement. Yeah, don't play scared. Right, exactly. Just run at them. Run at them. They're not going to be able to fight back. They've got the Blade Mail now for the Legion Commander. Uh, pretty good timing. He had, a, had an excellent start, and obviously he's been delayed a little bit, but they still get it around the time that oh, he's entry down. Up. Nice pick up on Jerex. There goes that sentry, but they're still going to be able to fight him with the Nost, and that's going to be the Hey! That is such a terrifying combination. Having the, the Troll Warlord Battle Trance with a with Legion. Legion. Yeah. Scary indeed. Fortunately, Legion has not won most of her duels, so she's uh, she doesn't have that really big threatening physical damage, but I'm sure she'll get there. Given this current rate, having a 6k net worth lead 21 minutes in, Invictus Gaming certainly seems to be playing, playing a much more and solid game. He's hiding pretty far back here, and he does have the Echo Slam. I think he can pretty much three-shot any of these heroes, right? He goes in, hits the Enchant Totem, then Echo Slams, Enchant Totems again, hits. I think that pretty much kills anybody. I um, believe so. And don't forget that True Strike. So even Troll, yeah. not going to be able to stop the damage output. Granted, if you don't kill him in that combo and Burning is able to pop a BKB, then you're going to have a really bad time because yeah. you're not going to get to move anymore. Yeah, he, he's just going to start life stealing up. Mask Madness swings. Look at him. He's hitting for almost 200 damage a hit already. Uh, he's actually going to pick up the Blink Dagger here. I, and I like this a lot because it creates a lot of chaos in these team fights. And it, it's hard because OG have a very clear game plan set up. You know, we go in, we set up the Supernova, then we get the Overgrowth Entangle. Somewhere there's going to be a black hole. They don't like chaotic fights. They like very clean, precise team fights with this kind of lineup. And this Blink Dagger to the back lines for the troll is just going to create a lot of, of chaos because the IG team is going to be very split up and, and kind of focusing, you know, individual heroes. OP's going to be over here targeting some support. Bernie's going to be going for a core on the side or in the back lines or something like that. And there's not going to be a clear opportunity for that big black hole. Just kind of building on what you're saying about the Blink before BKB. He has the Aegis to fill the timing to where you would normally want the BKB anyway. Oh, yeah, that's So true. if IG were to take a fight right now and Burning dies once because they have to commit Black Hole and Echo to him, then he just comes back anyway. So regardless of... It's it's a more efficient farming item because it gets you across the map faster. Yep. You don't have to worry about the BKB just yet because your Aegis is still on your inventory. And then, you know, later on into the game when he feels like he needs to finish it up, which I'm guessing is going to be his next choice, then they'll have that really strong peak and being able to fight into the ultimates of OG. The only thing that I guess he might want in addition to that BKB is maybe thinking about disassembling the SNY and going for a Manta, because he's playing against Tree. Yeah, and if you true. BKB too early and you get Overgrowth, that can feel real bad. Yeah, especially if you pop your ultimate and your Battle Trance, but then you get it 
overgrowth. Yeah, that's that's like the worst feeling in the world. No Tail is still trying to get his boots of travel, but the Enigma does hit his level 15. That's a, a very big peak for the Enigma because he now gets the cooldown. No Tail. No Tail is going to be dueled up in serious trouble, especially against that Blade Mail, the Chain Frost. They throw everything they have at him. These picks don't come along very often for IG at this point, simply because OG is like, trying to play a keep away game. It's a lot of hero commitment. I guess that's the one thing that OG can take solace in, is having to have four or five heroes in the vicinity to make sure that they get that kill. But if XXS keeps getting this dual damage, eventually what's going to happen is he won't need his team anymore. He'll be able to just kill you on his own. And that's where it becomes really problematic, because then you're not being able to account for multiple heroes in the same spot. Black Hole, OP. Gonna be able to catch there, just full on commitment. Take down OP. That's got to be worth it. I mean, now IG are obviously just going to head straight into OG, but the, the thing, the difference is that one time they used Supernova and Black Hole to be able to win this team fight. OG could still win a fight without Black Hole based on the Supernova Overgrowth plus Echo Slam combination. So IG can't be too fearless in just charging into OG once OP's back in. At the very least, until they have BKBs. Yes. That, that's going to be the one that's point true. where OG's team fight is going to feel, I guess, a bit underwhelming. Unless S4 gets, you know, he has the BKB now, but he's gonna need, you know, that Midnight Pulse down. Maybe he even needs damage from Aghanims. Blink Blade Mail here. Yeah, this Sunray to be able to help keep Anna alive and might even be able to win this fight. Look at this, XXS dropping lower and lower. They are gonna be able to win it. Supernova goes out immediately afterwards. Burning's gonna try and focus it down. Jarex is also quite low. He managed to kill the Supernova and finish up Jarex as well. And he gets a bash on to No Tail. Just the extra little bit of help. Fortunately, Efficient will buy No Tail the time. The kick lands. Bobica gets the goal. And now Anna is gonna be in trouble. Do we try to turn on the Burning? My friend, you don't challenge B God. He's gonna be chased down underneath the tier two. That's four down from O. OG, and all it cost them was a measly XXS Legion Commander. A big win for Invictus Game. Bulbaka is just crushing it this game. What an Earthsphere player. This is kind of what we talked about the other day. It's, Earth Spirit's not really seen as much as he used to be seen play, but if you have a person who plays the hero at the level of like a Bulbaka or a Jerax, you, you're doing yourself a disservice by not playing it. Like yeah. He's had a lot of clutch silences, clutch stun there onto uh, No Tail to get the kill after it looked like he was going to get away ensuring that Anna couldn't get the Echo out. He probably would have killed Burning. Like, he was at about a 1,000 health. We'll get to watch it again here. XXS goes in. We can see how good Phoenix is against Legion in this specific instance. It's the Sunray dealing damage and also healing. I have to wonder, like, they focus so much on saving Anna using that Overgrowth there. It comes back to bite them later on when they pop the Supernova and unable yeah. to control Burning as he just goes straight for the egg. Yeah, we'll get to see it again. Pele in action. There it is. No! Very nicely done. And then this, there's not really much that they can do once the, the ultimates are down. They kind of have to just go on full retreat, yeah. wait a little bit longer. You know, No Tail still making his way towards those boots of travel, man. It is 27 minutes in. What is with the mass dual receptors that OG is trying to build? They got one on Anna, that's fair enough, but they're also building one on both the tree and protector as well as the demon. It's super value this game. Like, you can dispel a lot of what Ember Spirit does to you. You can dispel Magnetize off of yourself, a silence as well coming out from the geomagnetic grip. There's a ton of things that you can remove from yourself. You know, you get searing chains, for example, or they pop a BKB and the troll's hitting you. You're just trying to buy time, yeah. you know? Because when Invictus Gaming start the fight, they throw out all their old abilities very quickly. And if you can kind of stop that momentum during the fight and you get your counter initiation with an overgrowth and an echo, sometimes the Yules is all the time you need to get that chance. What about the difference though? Because uh, like Yule Scepter, can't really save allies in that regard, especially if the enemy is BKB. That's true. W what about like a four staff on one of these heroes? Do you think it just doesn't really save these heroes? I don't, not at this point, no. no. I don't think it saves them. Control is super fast. That's the thing. Yeah. That, that one little burst, you get like, oh, you get a little bit of distance. Control just like in half a second closes the distance again because he even went for the movement speed talent at level 15. Oh, and Burning's no. build on Troll is pretty much always the same from what I've seen. It's, it's yeah. 414, so he gets the maximum movement speed from the uh, the Berserker's Rage, and then he goes for the movement speed talent as well, and he gets Master Madness. So between those three things, you're almost at movement speed cap anyway. Yeah. And then the late game Butterfly as well. Yep. Can activate the Flutter if he chooses to. Now, IG, they've got bottom lane pushed in really well. Mid is over the river, so they're actually going to go for a five-man smoke. Now, five-man smokes are kind of rare unless you've got that kind of wave push in. Or, you know, there's some sort of 
impending 5 on 5 oh, team. And, uh, and it's going to be the first one spotted here. Bulbasaur's going to be able to get the game kick onto him. They managed to get the duel off as well. And it doesn't matter if this is sun right there. Burning will rip apart Anna. Now the Yule Scepter on to Burning to try and slow him down. Anna's going to try and make his way away. But Bulbasaur is there to keep him in his place. 11.26 now at 29 minutes in. Invictus Gaming showing there no slouches. They won't just give a free 2-0 to OG. They're going to try to end this series with a tie. 13k net worth advantage here, just under the 30 minute mark. IG looking really solid here in game number two. No overgrowth thrown out there. I believe that Jerax just assumed, even if he had. Rolling. Oh, look at your what a time for that one, but no time. Oh, oh my god. god. He just evaporated. Oh, oh, sweet poor No Tail. Sweet young boy. I think the Veil hit after his doppelganger, right? So he just yeah, it did. exploded. He took so much magic damage from that. There might even have been a, a Maelstrom proc in there as well. The Flight of Fist and the Remnant landing. The gem on Boboka has been doing a ton of work. Like, if you look at the map right now, OG have no vision whatsoever. Yeah. Like, it's very hard to anticipate movements like that when you just cannot see anything. Your lanes are all pushed past the river. Very hard to get out on the map right now if you're OG. You're really looking for that... I, I think that's why they did the movement top, right? Because you, you just don't see anything. So you kind of have to be together. And if you're going to be together, you want to push. You want to try to get an objective. So you're not just like farming jungle as five. It doesn't feel very good to do that. Just share a neutral creepy experience. You've already got nerfed. Yeah, this is bueno. very quickly getting out of hand. They do have such a wombo combo that I would say that it is possible for them to make a comeback. Sure. It just requires IG to kind of overcommit to something. I, I think IG are doing a really great job at making sure that even if they do get into a bad team fight, like it's not going to be the end of them. They're they're not like running at OG that often. They're actually spreading apart and farming very efficiently. So that even if they do run into like, oh, okay, we, we lost to a three-man black hole or something, like they'll still have a significant advantage. They'll still be controlling the map because again, OG just kind of has to stay five in at all times. They're so scared of the pickup potential. They're going to be able to get an initiation onto Boba Cup, but a four staff actually managed to save Black Hole. Oh, they come forward, managed to catch two. No tails there on the side. They're going to be able to get the Supernova on top of that one, but Burning is not actually in that one. He's going to be in the Roshan pit, meeting on the egg, and he does manage to kill it. Go on to the... Now, that's going to be No Tail going down with Phantom Lancer. Now, and it's going to be caught as well. Boba Cup may have missed the roll, but it doesn't miss the kill. Actually, it says he's still man fighting against it. Ford, he stays alive. The heal as the procs come off on the moment of courage against the Eidolons. And he will stay alive. That's going to be a full five-man wipe. 12 to 32, Invictus Gaming go right back to the Roshan pit. OG tried to contest, grab themselves ages, and they can keep going with no black hole available for OG for the next day or so. Oh, man. It was really close to, to being a fight win for OG. They got the two-man black hole. The Midnight Pulse was down. The follow-up A came in, but Burning was so far into the Roshan pit that the black hole didn't end up hitting him, so he was able to just attack the egg and Fly just ends up dying after the fact. XXS is so farmed that he just duels No-Tail, just knowing that he's going to be able to survive through that at the very least, and Enigma can't kill a Legion without Black Hole. There's no way. The old Scepter sets up the kick stone, but IG are not going to bother messing around with Phoenix. They've got their mind on objective. XXS actually, there's an Echo Slam. Oh, that actually knocks out too. Instantly, the Agent's gone, but Anna may have to give up his life for this one. Fortunately, the Sunray keeps him alive, and the Shrine will get him back to full, but Burning on his second life finishes up the melee racks. He wants that objective, even if it costs him his life. This early on in the game, it's a huge win, but it looks like Burning is still going to be able to get up, thanks to the help of Glimmer Cape. OG have no way to be able to stop his retreat. That was a nice Echo. They did make him burn through the cheese, but of course, a Tier 3 going down means the Shrines are available. To, uh, to go ahead and take out a little bit of bonus golden experience. Also the map control. Invictus Gaming probably don't need much more of that at this point, but they'll take it. Burning is almost level 25. Yeah, he is just, he is going ham. That's crazy. He's 21,000 net worth. The next highest in the game is 16,000. That's on his own team. The man knows how to hit his creeps. Just for the viewers real quickly, can we pull up the fantasy point? I know I know some people have been uh, kind of hoping to look at that. You see, Burning's actually sitting at 23 fantasy points. Well, because at 17. It's a 33-minute game. That's a lot of points. That's a lot of points for this early on. It just goes to show how much destruction Invictus Gaming have put into this game. Burning sitting at 655 gold per minute. 
Well, there's still maybe, I would say, one or two really big fights left for OG to kind of get everything together. You know, the Echo, the Egg, the Black Hole, the, the Overgrowth to kind of take a team fight. But the longer the game goes, we, we haven't really talked about much of it, but the, the split pushing potential, I think, of, of IG, given how strong their cores are at this stage, just seems to be a little bit better than what OG can potentially do. Because A, you're scared. If you show heroes in a lane, you could potentially just die to the Legion Commander, for example. And B, if you were trying to pick a hero yourself, you gotta commit so much. Like, you gotta send in a black hole, you gotta echo somebody. Man, No Tail just looks so weak against these heroes. When you when you start so far behind, and it's... There's, there's no part of the game where I can see No Tail finally feeling comfortable against this Ember Spirit, you know? Like, Ember Spirit's always going to be farmed enough that one slide of fist is going to do so much damage to uh, to both him and clear out the illusion. Same kind of goes for XXS's dupes. Uh, just because the Phantom Lancer isn't going to be tanking up very quickly anytime soon, he's going to be able to get his Manta, but it's really that third item where maybe you get Scotty, maybe you get Hard, something like that. Yeah. Seen a couple of assault cuirasses on Phantom Lancer. I like the hard choice just because, you know, hard butterfly is, is one of the, the better late games because you kind of need the sustain too. You kind of want to be in and out of the fights like a Slark would be, for example. Right. Just go out, regen, come back in with full health, try to drag out the fight as much as you can. It doesn't really play that well with how your team fights though because you're so ultimate reliant. It's kind of like you throw your ultimates and if you haven't won the fight by then, you're just not going to win the fight. Late game uh, talents for Phantom Lancer. Is there anything that could really change? I mean, you've got 15% magic resistance or evasion. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty good little buff up there. And then the 25 plus 20 strength could help out a lot if he chooses that route. Just trying to see like what, like where can OG really peek out here in some way that gives them a little boon. Because I'm, I'm just not seeing the opportunity don't think IG will ever make that mistake that gives the game-winning, or at least fight-winning, black hole to OG. That's kind of what they need, though. Oh, XXS is going to find Jerex. See you later. I agree that it's it's very difficult at this point to force Invictus Gaming into a situation where they feel the need to clump up that much. Normally, you if the game was closer, you could possibly force it by No-Tail being you know, one or two items ahead of where he is right now and the enemy team needing to kind of congregate around him to get the kill, that's when you the Enigma really shines, when you can bait heroes in like that and, and get the return black hole. But they just don't have the net worth on their heroes to, to force that kind of fight. So it's like we were saying, Invictus Gaming just need to make a mistake. Like they need to either overcommit to a push and start diving, and then that's where S4 can go in, because he has the Lincolns and the BKB. So there's no way that even the Lich can stop the ultimate at this point. It's just a matter of are they going to be able to hit enough heroes to make that black hole win them the engagement? There is going to be a fresh item for burning soon. I was wondering if he was going to replace maybe a supply Scotty or something like that, but he's actually going to go ahead and break apart that uh, Mask of Manus trifle with Bloodthorn. I like it. I think that at this stage in the game, if you have a duel on somebody and you Bloodthorn them, <laughs> and you just beat them down with Battle Trance? I don't think any hero can ever live through that. No. I don't think so either. OG are going to go for a five-man smoke up here. And they might be able to get a pick off here. OP actually dances away. Good call on his part. Yeah. There wasn't any immediate sign that he was in danger. Jarex is running around with a gem. I think they really needed one just because they couldn't afford IG to have good vision of where OG was farming. Now there has just been constant map pressure from IG this game. I think they tried to run something similar in game number one, but just No-Tail having a much better lane matchup and also being one of those heroes that is more of the supporting cast and everyone kind of working towards a common goal of getting Ana farm seemed to work a lot better for them. I mean, at least in hindsight, right? Because oh, yeah. this game so far, Anna's been on more of a a playmaking mid hero who really needs to contribute a lot during the mid game, and for a multitude of reasons, it just really hasn't worked out for them. Yeah, there was already enough pressure on him to perform and create the space. You combine that with like maybe one error, say that blink in mid where he does an echo slam on two, um, that just costs you so much. Yeah, it's tough though because 
you get into these situations where you feel like you're behind, and part of you wants to try to play it as effectively as possible so you can keep your, your ultimates for later on. Yeah, I and mean, it was a huge win earlier times where he was able to kill heroes without the Echo Slam. It's like, oh, sick, he got that with just double enchant totem. Like, he can keep, he can maintain that offensive stance on the enemy team wall because he still has Echo Slam. Yeah, but then trying to be a little bit too efficient may have cost him more. They were going to have a four-man smoke up from IG. Look at this warding in the top lane. They are going to see everything. Yeah, this is really sick. They're going to be able to run into Jarek's first. Where's the... Uh, well, they're going to be able to actually catch S4 first. They can get the duel off after the Lincolns. Control him up. There was really good control for the overgrowth. They actually delayed that quite a bit. OP looks for more. Managed to kill the Phoenix. Now looks to grab Anna while Bubaka finishes off the Tree Protector. Anna does get spotted by OP and farther down. Looks like they're gonna try and catch No Tail. Well, this could be a full on wipe here. They actually get No Tail inside the base. Exodus charges after him, goes for the Bloodthorn. They manage to get him, and that is gonna be a pop. Back over to top lane. Anna's still trying to make his way away from OP, and he will manage to survive. It's not much of a win, though. Without a TP scroll, he can't actually get back to base in time. IG are just gonna demolish OG's buildings. Yeah, they're going to at least use the entirety of mid and bottom. They do have a tier 2 top, so this this might be some tier 4 damage, but I don't think they're going to be able to mega off of it. Regardless, that ward in top, like the lane ward, it saw like the entirety of OG walking down the lane. They knew they were split, and they managed to... Oh, and he got the duel anyway. Oh, so man. Man. still dies. All it's that time, Kev. <laughs> all that time running home. And actually, it would have been better for him just to die earlier, so he would revive sooner. Because IG, they're not really going to mess around with that tier 2. They say, whatever, let's just hit tier 4s. He can he still go for up. the buyback when No Tail's alive, I guess. That's going to be the last ditch effort here. They have Black Hole. He's going to have to blow up even before No Tail's here. They don't want to lose these tier 4s too early. So IG force what they wanted. will back away. But, uh, those, those creeps are actually going to maybe take the tier 2 for them. Yeah, one or two more Cardi hits. Got the living armor, though. Jerex with the save. I think it, yeah, okay, the catapult's gonna die. In the meantime, Roshan's up. Uh, IG can just go ahead and walk back into the pit pretty much whenever they want. I mean, this is probably the scariest point for them when they know that OG have everything. And fighting around the Roshan pit, you know, historically against heroes like Enigma and Earthshaker and stuff, you, you've seen some pretty drastic comebacks. This is a 43k net worth lead at 41 minutes. That means they are 1,000 GPM oh per minute or more than what OG have right now. I think that's one of OG's characteristics, though, right? Like, even when they're behind in games, they still manage to make it last a really long time. It is kind of crazy. I think some of it is the respect that teams have for OG, and then combined with the OG's just resilience, they never give up. Uh, is, for some reason, they just find ways to execute team fights and make them kind of even despite a gigantic net worth deficit. XXS. Running around with Shadowblade, hoping to be able to find any hero at this point. Because even uh, the heroes with Lincolns, like uh, S4 and Aikman, can just halber that off and get the duel anyway. Oh, Burning just manning up here. It's like, yeah, I got a lot of farm. I got like AOG. Oh! oh! S4, why? They didn't see that though, right? They're I mean, out of the Roshan pit, so... They saw the Midnight Pulse, I don't know if they Just saw the Just act cool, S4! Act like nothing happened! But No-Tail's already dead, so something's happened. IG... <laughs> He's giving himself the well-played, at least he can laugh about it. Ooh, that's a rough one. Just play it off, S4. Just play it off. I mean, that's what happens when you don't have vision, right? Jarex is probably gonna be... ...getting beaten down here. Shadow play. Good choice. OP can't catch you. Uh, Bernie... Oh, what was that, Jarex? They, they found him, so back over to Roshan. They go. No, I, I want to see S4 go for the fake out. When this push comes in, I want him to go for the BKB, Blink, Midnight Pulse, but no Black Hole follow up, you know? Just I don't even know if IG would care. They probably don't. Anna certainly doesn't care. He's dead. You have no cares when you're dead. He has no buyback either. Man, this is. Whew, this is rough. The Troll Warlord. Currently has more gold than the two highest people on OG, I think, combined. He is a rich man. They get up to around 29 and a half. He'd be sitting at 31. Well, I gotta say, you know, you and I were talking about Lich on the other stream and how we, we haven't really seen a lot of the games where the Lich 
really kind of does a lot. But I think in this game, it was actually perfect. Because the dual lane that IG had were able to pressure OG so much. Such a strong dual lane. They're going to be able to get the duel onto the Enigma. s force down, and he doesn't have buyback either. Jump forward, no tail with the Bloodthorn. Chase him down into the fountain. They get him as well. Might as well go for fly. Bobaka tanks it up for his allies. He will tank the death as long as they can get that extra kill. Godlike speed for XXS. What we're just going to end this game on. 13 to 44 is the end game score. IG picking up a kill in it. That was a very commanding performance from Invictus Gaming. I don't really think they ever let go control of the game even once. Like, they, they were winning in the lanes, they were yep. winning the early mid game, they were winning mid game, late game. It's like they got every single Roshan. It's just. In this particular matchup, I think it's very hard for heroes like Phantom Lancer and Earthshaker to play from behind. They were banking a lot on what their teamfight ultimates could really bring to the table and say, okay, if our lanes don't win, it's it's fine because we have just this crazy AoE team fight that IG are going to have a really hard time engaging into. Mm -hmm. Which on paper sounds great, except burning free farms. OP was kind of losing his lane a little bit, but he eventually came back due to ganks. Like the two ganks back to back on Ana mid really set them back. They were relying on that blink so, so much to be able to keep the momentum they needed to stay in the game. And they just ultimately crumbled under an insane amount of pressure. Yeah, if this was, if IG had picked last pick, if they had gone for some sort of aggressive carry um, that wasn't nearly as late game focused as Troll, then maybe OG would have felt a lot more comfortable with their timing in that game. But instead, it's like, they, they went for this pickup where they have a lot of team fight, but they don't really have this this one core that's going to scale super well into late game. So IG, they had very little pressure on them. They won the laning phase, they took control of the game, and then they, they just kind of chilled out. You know, they went for these picks here and there and stuff, but there was no pressure on them to end the game anytime soon because Burning was farming and farming and farming. Well, I mean, at the very least, OG and IG can walk away saying it was, it was an even match, you know? 1-1 one, one ends the series. Yeah, they certainly can, and that puts our, uh, what were they, both six and four, right? So they're not, now they're, they're pretty much the same. Yeah, seven and five. So they're still vying for that top four in their group stage. As we were talking about earlier, though, OG still have a very tough opponent ahead, and that is going to be LFY. We have another great game coming up, though, Draskal. Evil Geniuses in LGD is right around the corner. So please. Don't go anywhere, stick around on this mainstream as we have another great series coming up.